Welcome. This is this is Francine, and she's going to take us around the Capilano Suspension Bridge and, and tell us a little bit about it and, and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Now, what, have you got so. some surprises planned for us? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I can plan a few surprises. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Nothing scary, but... Well, we're not quite at Halloween yet, so... Oh, do you do some scary stuff at Halloween? Yeah, we can. Do you? With the bridge? <laughs> With Get the troll? bridge, yeah. big, big trolls no, coming no, out of the bridge? No, no, and, no, no, no. no. No, nothing like that. It's scary enough crossing the bridge. Oh, okay. We do, right. don't want to give anyone a heart attack. All right. That wouldn't be good for business. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have repeat customers then. No, no, and that's very important to us. Exactly. Well, let's go check it out. Then. Sure. All right, here. All right, follow me. What do we have here? <laughs> so that shot over there, yes. I don't know if you can get in there, is what the bridge used to look like in 1889. Now it's, as you will see later, it's very different it says from what 1905 we on the thing. Right, but this is what it looked okay. like. <laughs> I'm not trying to That's rock the, the boat. That's what the picture was taken. Okay. <laughs> northern style totem poles. The carvers that we have working here at Capilano come from northern British Columbia, so of course their style of carving is? Northern. Very good. You learn quickly. These were carved here in the park. Okay. And of course every pole tells a story. I like to leave it to the carvers who've actually created the poles to tell the story because it's very personal. Right. But um, as you can probably guess, some of the characters, that's a wolf there, so I'm sure there's a wolf in the story somewhere doing something, maybe something nasty. There's usually a dark side to some of the stories. Yeah. Makes it interesting. And there's always a moral, some right. wisdom that you can learn. These are carved in the 1930s and southern style type of poles. As you can see, there's uh, huge differences between the northern and the southern. Lots of colors used on these ones, and northern style, two to three colors used. Okay. All right, so okay, the bridge is, uh, okay, 450 Sorry. feet across, okay. 230 feet above Campolano River. Not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Encased in 13 tons of concrete on either side. You can't see the concrete, but it's there. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't look for it. You is won't it find it. Is it the invisible concrete or something? That's it. It's hidden. Okay. It's very deep. Okay. So you should feel very safe and secure. Okay. We get over 800,000 people visiting us every year. So that's the number of people that cross this bridge. How do they check it? I think it's going to be okay. Is that what they do? It's a great job to have. <laughs> it's a bit damp. It's a bit damp. I'm not catching anything right now. Hang on. It's kind of the last thing on my mind right now. Hey, hopefully I can see some fish. <laughs> the bottom of this ravine. Well, if you're not afraid of heights, then you can enjoy the scenery. Mm. Look around and soak it in, but okay. if, you're, if you've got a bit of vertigo, uh, you're probably just focused on the other end of the bridge, which is too bad because it really is beautiful. Yeah. This is our trout pond, and we have rainbow trout in this pond uh, at most times of the year until uh, a family of river otter eats it all. Then, of course, we have to restock the pond. Put a whole bunch more fish Yes. And uh, and then just have it as an otter thing. It'll be an otter thing instead catch because all the, the otters otter? will be up. Yeah, catch them in here. Yeah. Well, we kind of like to leave everything in its natural state. Oh, kinda right. Let yeah, yeah. Nature do its business. Very good. They're getting through that gate. That's what, that's the thinking that I just did. They're getting through this gate. There's a big. Could be. Yeah. Could very well be. <laughs> oh yeah. That's the real. Can you tell that's Douglas fur? Um. No. Well, I know now. Now you can. Now, now I... Just you wait until we walk in the woods and you'll be pointing them out left, right, and center. Oh, is there going to be a test? <laughs> it's definitely going to be a test. Oh, man. Okay. I better... <laughs> Hope you're taking notes. Which is this? The spruce. Oh, I know spruce. Perfect. Believe me. What kind of trees did you plant, Leila? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked. We planted uh, a lot of spruce, some, uh, some fir. Not Douglas fir or anything, oh. but some uh, balsam fir. It's not a good wood, really. Uh, pine. We even planted some uh, lots of different stuff. Oh, very good. Yes. What so, in the world? Um, that looks big to me. I would say that's a big snail. These a are slug. actual size. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> that's who's eating your fish, though. Welcome to the show today, folks. We're going to go out to the beach. Leland's endless summer of fun. So we're gonna go get my, my son packed the cooler for me and we're just we're gonna go we're gonna have a great time here. Just get some things that uh
Oh, it's draining a little bit here. Uh, well, that's okay. That's okay. That's what it's like out here. We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go out in the rain anyways, and uh, you can't stop my endless summer. You know? All right. Hi. Right, just going to the beach. Okay. It might clear up. I think it's gonna clear up. I think we're gonna be okay. But, uh, oh, <laughs> the tree almost fell down on me there. The wipers aren't working. No problem. A little ingenuity and we're fine. I'm on intermittent right now. Sorry I'm yelling a little bit, but uh, a little hard to hear out here. <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, but uh, even though it may not look really, really sunny, there's still some sun coming through. So hopefully my son packs some, uh, whatchamacallit there. Just trying to jimmy this thing to get up. <laughs> Want to get as much protection from the sun. Holy monkey! You have at the beach, huh? Oops. You know, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, it's, it's probably not, it's not that sunny out tonight, so we're gonna leave the umbrella. Uh, a little gust of wind sometimes picks up out here. That's what'll happen. So we'll, we'll leave the umbrella for now. And we'll get set up here and uh, on the lawn chair and just enjoy ourselves. You know, just to, to err on the side of caution, Maybe I should just sprinkle a little bit on of the old uh, Copper Tone 30. Just give it a good... You never can be too sure out here, you know, the ozone the way it is. I, uh, I brought the chair down a little closer so I could uh, dip in the surf a little. That's the thing I like the best about coming out here. So maybe we'll go... Whoa! <laughs> there that wind goes again. Have to make sure I get extra... extra low tune for here. So, uh, we're gonna wade out into the water a bit and uh, just get a feel for the ocean. Holy monkey! Okay, uh, what? Okay, well, you know what? My chair's falling down. I think that what I'll do is just kind of stick around and lay around. I don't want to be too active today, you know? You just kind of want to relax on a day like today. Ah, uh, just look at it. <laughs> oh, oh. That's the day at the beach, folks. We're, we're done for another day. Had a great time here today. Boy, I tell ya. You know, it's one thing people out here seem to take for granted that they have this beautiful ocean so close and uh, non-existent winters and stuff like that. So you got, I encourage you folks to get out and, and enjoy the, the ocean. You know, it was a little, a little bit windy today, but boy, the beach was nice, you know? And uh, I, I'm not even that, that cold. It, it was cold to begin with, but now I, I I'm really not cold anymore. My, I can't even really feel anything in my extremities at all. I thought it'd be kind of fun if we went out and, and, uh, and did an Easter egg hunt and search. And uh, Tom has agreed to, to hide it throughout the uh, studio here. And so I'm just going to go around and looking for Easter eggs. You get to dress up first. No, that's not part of the deal. I'm not, I'm not dressing up. There you go. <laughs> no. No way. I'm not putting this on. I'll, I'll, you know what? Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll carry the basket, but I'm not wearing this. Put the ears on. I'm not putting the ears on. Put the ears on. No. Okay, I'll wear them for a little while. Let's start searching here. Randy's banana? <laughs> can I Can I take that? Take the banana. Does it, you know what I'm doing with the chocolates? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm giving chocolates to the... Children of the world. Are you stealing? <laughs> this is my Easter egg hunt. Put them in. Put chocolate in front of a girl and expect me not. No, get out of there. No, it's mine. Hey! The children of the world are starving because you're being greedy with your chocolate. 
It's my chocolate. Put it in there. No. I'll give you a banana. <laughs> give you Randy's banana. Is this part of the? <laughs> is this part of the? I think that's. Oh, is that lunch. your own? Yo, okay. Okay, yeah. I didn't know. It's rabbit food. It's rabbit food, and I love bunny. <laughs> Happy Easter. Wait a minute. I've been I've been duped. Look at that trick, huh? We have a raisin by Ratro and a little chocolate egg. I think that's a raisin. That's not raisin! Ooh, that looks pretty good. Uh, that's Todd's lunch. Is it? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have that later. This looks too good to pass up. Oh, we got the cash cow down here. Look at this. We got a mini ravioli. We got some soup. I think that's Steve's lunch. No, no, you don't have lunch in a can. Wow. Great. Oh, you tried to throw me off by turning on the, the lights, didn't you? How am I doing? Am I getting almost everything? Yeah, it's, you're getting pretty good. Is there a huge chocolate rabbit somewhere that I'm... Yeah. Is there? There's two of them. How did, do you know how this got all started, this chocolate giving at Easter? I do know how it got started. I went to Zeller's at about 9.30 this morning. <laughs> Hi, friends. I see Paris, I see France. I see some chocolate. Gonna fill the pockets of my pants. Oh, bingo! Look at this. Look at this sucker, eh? Hey, I'm a chocolate rabbit. I got an egg full of basket. I got a basket full of eggs. Or an egg full of basket. Whichever. I'm a dyslexic rabbit. That's why I said basket full of. Never mind. Wait a minute. There he is. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think I may have lost your bunny. Honey is somewhere in there. <laughs> okay, I couldn't find any children in the world. I guess it must be at school, most of them. So, I'm gonna give the chocolates to the people of the office. That is so precious. No, Thank you. No, 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 I, hey, hey, oh, oh, oh. That means a Here, lot to you me. you know what? Yeah. Oh, I can have that one. No. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, put those back now. Come on, one. What, one? Yeah. One? What kind of Easter, uh, you know, happy uh -huh. thing is that? Hop down the hall. No. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not hopping down the hall. Hop down the I hall. I will not hop down, hop the, down the, hall. the hall. No. Hop down the hall. No. Easter, we're checking out Purdy's Chocolate Factory today, and uh, oh, my son's gonna be envious of me today. But uh, before we go in there, apparently I have to put on this uh, this hat. I uh, I hate wearing these things; they make me look stupid. But uh, anyway, let's get in there and meet uh, meet our guide for the day, and, and go have some fun. Oh. Oh. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> uh, oh! <laughs> there we a, go. We get you a little mustache happening or something like that. How's that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is so I don't get recognized when I steal a chocolate candy. Now what the ladies are doing are rolling the little chocolate uh, cream centers into little balls here. As they go through the line, they're going to actually go through the bottom and then through our chocolate curtain and then down through the tunnel, and then a second coat for the, the actual part where we're going to put the coconut on them. Huh? Right, whoops. I doubled up on that one. I'm going to I'm going to step I'm going to skip right to the whoops. I doubled up on this one. That's a double. Okay. So you keep them apart. Yeah, okay. Hey? Hey, you see that? You know what? I'm going to do 3. Is that Is that possible? Huh? Hey? All right, I'm four. I'm going for four, eh? Can we do four. 
Oh. Woo. If I could use a break, how about you, eh? Yeah. Okay, now we're off to the bunny land. Off to the bunny land? Bunny land. Okay, here we go. There you go. Right. Oh, look at this, eh? So this is 120 gram solid bunny that Purdy's has. Oh. And kids absolutely just love solid bunnies or anything to do with Easter. You see, you see the milk dark and white. Can I do like the? Give well, me you that? Can, yeah. ah. We will actually fill the chocolate on one side of the cavity, like so. Yeah. And then we'll close it up, and then we'll put a clip on. And then from here, they will the ladies will shake and swirl the chocolate around, okay. and then we'll put it on the chocolate Ferris wheel. And they will go around, just okay. like in an amusement park ride, and they will tumble. It's like this bunny's in traction, right? <laughs> You'll be all right. Come on, Bruce Lee. <laughs> now, this particular bunny can be quite oh. vicious. Yeah, I've bunny. actually received three stitches, uh, and wow. I, it was pretty funny when I had to go uh, to the, the hospital and, and get some stitches, and they asked me how I did it, and it was uh, on a 26-pound chocolate bunny. They just kind of looked at me, that was kind of... <laughs> Yeah, All right, right, drugs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> drugs it is. And then on the opposite side of the Ferris wheel here, we have the Squire Bunny. And he's a six-pound bunny. Uh, <laughs> so it runs about... It's like Dr. Evil. Jill is actually going to hand paint oh, okay. Great. this Can and make the little it? lovely swirls. We actually keep it quite thick, so it... it she can get these swirls without them running around too much. Wow. As we have, we have, we have the Christopher bunnies here. Uh, they're a one kilogram bunny. Okay. And then we have a Jonathan, which is a little bit smaller, well within our price range. Jonathan was the one we were looking at. Right? Yes, and that was one of the ones that they were gonna about to mold. How many people buy the huge? Uh, a lot of people just do the raffle thing, and uh, oh, okay. they will buy them for charities, and then they will raffle it off because I don't think you could sit down and eat 26 pounds of chocolate oh. in one sitting. So that would be a bit much. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yes. Uh, well, you it's the better. head and you'd be like, oh. <laughs> I know. It's bad enough trying to work on a six pound bunny right here. And this is a oh. hollow bunny, but it's still six pounds of chocolate is quite yeah. a bit. It would take you at least a year. <laughs> but my daughter, maybe three weeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my son will climb inside and start eating his way out. That's mm -hmm. what he do. Yeah. All right, welcome, folks. Today we are at in Maple Ridge at the Sun Hang Do with Master Dave Kinney. How are you doing today, Dave? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Great. And I asked you to uh, to show me a few things today. What what are you going to be showing me? I'm going to show you a little bit of pain today. We're going to be we're going to be doing some uh, some basic movements, uh, some striking techniques, some weapons. Just to give you a little idea of what Sun Hang Do is all about. These are my weapons right here, huh? Those are quite nasty weapons. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah yes. exactly. Um, great. This is, sounds great. Uh, just only thing I ask is uh, no facial shots. I got a face. It's for TV. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. What if somebody just grabbed you like this? What would you do if I was about to? I did some wrestling. Eh? Okay. I would say, please let go. <laughs> and if that didn't work. <laughs> okay. What if I came from behind and put on some kind of, if, some if, kind of if, grip? If you okay. came something like this, now there's a lot of different things I can do. I can step oh, through oh. and behind, take down your leg, grab your hair. Yeah! Okay. So, focus on your target. Focus your eyes where you want to hit. All right. Touch it slow. Touch it slow? Yeah. Good. Get a little bit closer. Good. Get it in tight to your body. Inhale. Then. Yeah. Ooh, huh? Just about took it off. Just about took oh, it off. Nice. That's good. I, uh, folks, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, a lot of people commented on my styrofoam breaking before, and uh, I'm here to show that I'm legit and I can break boards as well. I know I can. All right. I will do it. Yeah. Nice. Whoa. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> How many years have you been? Uh, I've been this? I've been training in martial arts for uh, over 15 years now. Okay. 
And uh, I've got my black belt in Taekwondo and my master instructor in Sunango under Grandmaster Kang. Okay. Now, did you uh, did you take that all here? Is that all? I started with Grandmaster Kang in Coquitlam, and then uh, after about five years of training, I opened up my own school here in Maple Ridge. Okay, great. How many Sun Hang Do's are there? There's nine in the lower mainland, actually. Oh, okay, super. Okay, well, um, just just because I want to know, uh, everybody else uh, able to break boards that easily first time, or actually, it usually takes about three or four months of intense yeah, training. Yeah, but that's with what I you, figured. You were on the fast track. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I took some. I created my own thing. It was flukata. Back yeah, it's the way of the fluke. <laughs> he's, he's not around right now, so I'm gonna do some messing around. <laughs> okay. Left hook, huh? You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Alright, that's it, I'm fine. I should give him some flu cutter. That's what I should be doing. Oops. Oh. Well. Oh yeah, he's got it. He's got it. So uh, you can do the, the the downward strike. So if someone does a downward strike, I can redirect, come in, perhaps for a for a choking technique that, uh -huh. that works really nice yeah you ever when, you, when you're starting to teach people stuff do they ever get too aggressive right away and like hey come on i'm the guy here oh, you want to yes. try this yeah, yeah if someone like does this, that uh, we have a basic counter for that oh, yes okay. well thanks very much master dave thanks for coming by leland appreciate it all right well we'll have see you Here's your belt. Yes, thank you. I was looking for that. If you've tried Buckley's cough mixture, then you know how bad it tastes. And if you've never used Buckley's to help yourself get over a cold, then all I can say is don't get a cold. Listen to what the makers of Buckley's have actually said about their product, feared by more people than ever before. People swear by it and at it, and they are dedicated to ensuring that every new batch of Buckley's tastes just as bad as the last batch. Now, although I might not like the taste of Buckley's cough mixture, I do have to admire them for doing something that very few advertisers do. They tell us the truth. We don't have to read between the lines. We don't have to read the fine print. We don't have to ask around. Buckley's tastes bad, and they tell us that. Most advertisers water down the truth and tell us half lies. It gets to us after a while. Is anything true? Is anyone telling the truth? I like the way Jesus put it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Lies might sell a product, but truth works. And Jesus is the truth. Mm -hmm.